All right, all right, all right. What is happening, everybody? Hope you are doing well. We've got some chats already. Fuzzy Ferret is here, says afternoon all. Mr. Jam, afternoon peeps. Ian Simpson, hello, hello, everyone. And first time chatter, happy hippo, says afternoon all. Lacco, Mr. E, afternoon. And Walk666 says afternoon all as well. So, good afternoon. Welcome to the stream. If you are new to the stream, then, uh, you know, in a few minutes, hopefully you'll have, uh, you'll have enjoyed the stream so much that you want to hit that follow button. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you can subscribe. Um, but I know that most of you are watching on Twitch. And, uh, yeah, that's this is where this is where we're at right now. Now, part of me is wondering whether to, to switch to one service and it probably would be youtube even though more of you are on twitch youtube streaming i just think is a better thing um i know that's like a lot of poker players are on twitch but i think youtube could be where to go for this so um that could be a point where it just we just decide to go on youtube um i've got uh yeah a lot more subscribers on youtube than on uh, than followers on twitch but uh, I don't know if that really means anything. Uh, Matt Burns says, hello, coach and everyone. Electric Foot says, had to stop studying poker to study poker. <laughs> also, hello. Awesome. All right. Well, we are going to review some hands from this final table. Um, final table, the big 55 again. Um, came third. Some funky spots uh, in a moment. Uh, we're going to look at... Pre-flop and post-flop today with ICM, obviously. Um, if you're new to the stream, you probably don't know that I've written a new book and it's out, I'm going to say soon, but it's in June, probably, maybe even July. Uh, but in a moment, it'll be down here, the final table. And uh, yeah, we're going to do some final table stuff today. Um, I'm also reviewing the Big 50. I made another Big 55 final table. Um I don't know, a few days, a week later. Um, I'm going to be reviewing that in more detail for members of my academy. Uh, so you guys watch out for that. So we, I think there are eight hands in this one. We're going to take, uh, take a look. And let's just get into it. Uh, so if you guys are ready, uh, just type in LDT into the chat. That's for let's do this. And we are going to do this. We're going to get into it. A uh, shout out to Lacko Mr. E, by the way, who subscribed about 15 minutes ago before the stream even started, which is awesome. Right, so uh, here's the first spot. We're five handed. We are currently three of five. Uh, Lucky Lady, shout out to Lucky Lady. Haven't seen you in these streets for a while. Hope you're doing well. Uh, who said LFD TRN, which uh, I really like. Um, who else is here? Happy Hippo and ZR Grizz. Awesome. Z. Why am I saying Z? I live in the UK. ZR Grizz. Let's go. Ian Simpson says, let's do this as well. Um, okay. So, what do you think? So, there's a reason why I marked this hand, not just because I want to look at what we should do at equilibrium, but also what we should do against somebody who's not playing optimally. Um, but anyway, guys, what would you do here? Let me know in the chat. I haven't done a, uh, a voting thing today. So you can just comment in the chat. Big 13E or Big E, I don't know, says hi. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Um, what are you guys going to do here with Jack9 suited? So we are three of five. We are in a small blind with Jack Nine suited. Um, the player in the big blind is four of five, and so their risk premium against us is going to be, you know, not insignificant given that they are not in last place. Um, clear jam. We've got a nice cool bub says a rip. Happy hippo says raise. Okay, what size are you raising to? Like two point five, three x, two point seven five x. Is that what you're doing? Are you going to call a jam? Uh, is jamming going to be better? What about limp? You know, all of these kind of funky, funky things. Um, I'll show you what I did in game. I, I jammed and, and he folded. So yeah, it's a really exciting hand. Um, 
Uh, no, but it is because we're gonna we're gonna talk about the um, the solution. So uh, here we go. Jack nine suited. Uh, let's first of all have a look at the bubble factors. So big blind against us. I mean, look at that. Ten point four percent. I said it was not going to be insignificant. I mean, that is pretty big. Um, I was chatting to someone earlier on in my in our Discord, and um, yeah. Uh, we were talking about sort of you know four or five percent changing things, but ten percent is going to change things a lot. So we probably get to be very very aggressive here, and the big blind then has to call very tight, which is just awesome uh, for uh, for us. So have a look two and a half or jam. If you raise two and a half, but I would I'd raise two and a half. But I would raise first in other part of range. Okay, so what are you doing with this hand? Just just jamming. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so let's have a look at our strategy. And as you can see, just uh, if you never used HRC before or you don't know what the colors mean, because not everyone has these colors. Um, white is fold. Green is call or limp. The pinky color is raised to 3x and the purple color is to jam. And you can see we just, yeah, we just jam, jam a lot of hands. Um, we don't limp very much, so we just want to apply a ton of pressure straight away, which is which is really nice to see. Uh, but when we do jam, our opponent gets to call all of these hands. Now, we could say that this is too wide. If we're playing against a recreational player in this situation, are they going to call King-10 off, Queen-Jack off 26% of the time, Queen-10 suited, Ace six off, ace three suited. I think the ace x and the pairs are easier for players to call with. I think you know king queen off, king queen suited is probably as well. But it would be interesting to know if like we just tighten this range up a little bit, how much wider the small blind do we get to jam uh, in the small blind? Because we're we're just going to end up absolutely printing. Um, but yeah, I, I, we're very happy to shove uh, shove our hand. A uh, question on YouTube from a name that I'm not even going to try to pronounce. Uh, it says, hey, can you please tell me what does it mean, um, the bubble factor percentage? So let's just uh, pull up these bubble factors again and talk about these. It's really weird. It looks really washed out on the on 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 OBS, but it's not washed out on my screen. So I don't know. Maybe there's something weird happening on OBS. Who knows? Um, so you've got two numbers in each box. The top number is the bubble factor. The bottom number is the risk premium. And what this means is, basically, when you face a jam, you have X, you need X amount of equity, right? And I can demonstrate this pretty easily. I will demonstrate now. So we jam and the big blind needs 46% equity to break even on a call. So any hand that has 46% equity or more, they should call. Wait for it though. They should call, and anything with less than 46% equity against our range, they should fold. But we just saw that they need an extra 10.4%. So they don't need 46%, they need 56.4%. So then they can say, right, I can call with any hand that has 56.4% equity against this, against this range, uh, against the jamming range. Now, I did some of this, uh, some of the calculations for this in the book. And when you do like raw calculations with an equity calculator, the result is not always exactly the same as the sim. Now, there's a couple of reasons for that. One is the, the sim is estimating the risk premium, right? Um, and the other thing is that the equity calculators don't, uh, they can't work out card removal. So that's why we, we get like a, a little bit of a difference. So I'll just, I'll, dem I'll try and demonstrate this um, with Power Equilab. Well, you can use any version of Equilab, I think, but let's, uh, let me just show you this. So our jamming range is, is this. I'm going to copy this and paste it in here. So our jamming range looks like this. And our opponent, to begin with, the, the, the for Chip EV, oh, that didn't work. Let's try again. Um, gets to call all of these hands, all right? So 
they get to call all pairs, all ace x, all king x, almost all queen x, etc., etc. You can see the see the thing there. But actually, they can't because they need fifty whatever it was fifty six point four. And that really doesn't work, does it? Let's try again. Fifty six point four percent, and we should see this range get a lot tighter. So now the range becomes five plus ace four suited, king nine suited, queen ten suited, ace seven off, king ten off. Okay, I'm going to take this to the main window just so we can compare it because if you ever do the, the sort of the the calculation yourself, then uh, you guys can't really see that, can you? Um, at the same time, not sure. Maybe we can. Uh, that kind of works. So. Uh, yeah, if you ever do this calculation yourself, you're going to see there's some subtle differences. I mean, we go down to fives with the calculation method, and we go to a7 off, but here we go down to a6 off and a bit of a5 off. Queen jack off is in there a little bit of the time. But to be honest, it's not bad. a3 suited is in here, but it's not in this one. So you get the idea, right? So the it's, it's never going to be exactly the same. I say never. Sometimes it will be because of just the way equities work. Um, but the... Yeah, if you ever do it and you compare it and you're like, well, that doesn't work, right? The, the, the risk premium's not right or something like that. Then it's to do with, uh, with, with card removal. If that makes sense to everybody, just type in MS, makes sense. Something along those lines. Biggie says, in this case, what percentage, of, what percentage EV of aces would you take? Ah, interesting question. So I, an interesting interesting point about we talked about this in the discord earlier as well about edge passing um so the basically the, the this idea has has come about in terms of like not wanting to take a spot that isn't worth taking for lots of big blinds so the the more chips that you're risking the more uh you the more valuable the more profitable you want the jam to be all right so this is sort of the general idea I kind of in my head and there's no there's no right answer to this it's just about what you believe right and I've heard th various numbers thrown about I like to use like okay if we're going to have if we're going to risk 15 big blinds then we we could potentially ha look for the value that is seven and a half percent so we've halved it seven and a half percent of the value of aces for example that's just a like this is what I like to use, but there's no no one telling you that that is the way to do it. In a soft tournament, you don't want to be uh, taking thin edges. In a really tough tournament, you've probably got to take all the edges. Okay, so if we looked at like this, um, the value of aces here for jamming aces, not for raising, because you can see raising is going to be way better than jamming here. Thirty dollars. All right, so seven and a half percent of thirty dollars is no idea. Um, Let's have a look. 30 times 0.75, $2.25. Okay. So you can see that jamming, whoops, jamming Jack 9 suited is uh, is definitely worth that. And in fact, jamming is the by far the best line in this. What's worth $5.28? But you could look at some really like thin jams, like 9.4 suited, and it's worth like a dollar and one cent. But don't forget, like I said earlier on, that this is obviously assuming that the player is going to call correctly. If he calls slightly too tight, then the EV of jamming 9-4 suited is going to go up. And therefore, um, you know, potentially the value of aces goes down because you're not getting called as frequently, right? So suddenly you this dollar might be worth two or three dollars instead, and the value of aces is is much lower, becomes twenty-five dollars instead, or something like that. So it's not just a case of just looking to see what it is at equilibrium. Um, but you can see a lot of these are, you know, pretty thin, pretty thin shoves. Um, Jack Nine suited not, but some of the others, um, others are. So that's just something you could do if you were going to risk twenty big blinds, for example. You could look at about like ten percent of aces. Like I said, though, there's, I've not seen anybody say this is why we do it. This is why we use these thresholds. But logically, it makes sense. The more chips, the more big blinds that you're risking, the bigger the edge that you want right? Of course, that makes sense. So if you risk 100 big blinds on a five bet jam, 
you want i mean that's probably then going to get silly but um <laughs> you you're not going to get 50 percent of the value of aces right um there aren't going to be too many hands that, that that have that i don't think but i've never actually seen it so hmm. interesting anyway um we might not do any node locking on this today but i think we've got a pretty good uh, discussion we've got loads more hands to look at so that's why i'm keen not to to do that anyway so that was five-handed and then all the rest of these hands are three-handed now sometimes i don't know why i mark hands and sometimes it's just really obvious in this situation i think that a lot of ace x hands will just want to be jams we can't re we don't really want to limp call but if we jam we're now risking you know more big blinds so that was the end of the threshold thing might be quite interesting to look at but um like I think we can get some better hands to fold here. I think we can potentially get some, maybe some pairs to fold. And I think we can get some better ace -X hands to fold. There's only three players worth of antis out there. And we're jamming almost 19 bigs to win 1.88 bigs. <laughs> so the risk versus reward doesn't sound uh, too appealing in this situation. That's just what I did, though. What do, what do you, you guys think? Do you want to raise? Do you want to limp? Do you want to fold? Let me know in the chat. Try and give some reasons as to why you would do that. Um, what we're looking for is logic. If you can support your argument with logic, it's probably the right answer. Um, so Biggie says, no, I mean big blind, Gareth. Oh, I don't know what I said. Big blind is four or five, yeah. Um, Biggie says clear rip. So try and give a reason why you think it's a clear rip, Biggie. That goes for everyone else as well. Get your thoughts in as to what you would do. And disagreeing with me is absolutely fine, by the way. That's, uh, I, I'm, I don't know what the answer is. Um, so if you've got a better answer in this situation, then uh, then maybe we, can, uh, maybe we can explore it. I'm going to lean back a little bit. Hopefully you guys can still hear me. Uh, the sound looks looks okay. I'll try and keep keep the voice up. Lack of mystery. I think Ace three off has good removal to big blind strong hands and plays poorly out of position. So Jam feels best to realize equity. Uh, Balalaka says limp and then Jam to a raise. Okay. So we've got some other ideas. Um, we've got a question mark at the end there as well. Give me some logical reasons why limping and then jamming over a raise would be better than jamming in the first place. I think that'd be good to, to look at. I mentioned right at the start of this stream about the new book. It's down here. If you want to pre-order it, you can do from DNB's website. Um, it says, I think it says on Amazon, it's currently unavailable, which is true because it's not out yet. Um, so you, you can't order it on Amazon, but you can pre-order it from DNB. What else? Uh, so... Mm. Big E says EV of rip is better than race first in, better than limp. Okay. But there's not there's no logic. That's not logic. That's just your opinion. You might be right that rip is better than raising than better than limping. Jandro says limp jam is better if he overbluffs. But since you don't have much ICM pressure, he shouldn't be doing it. Okay, that's cool. Phil Mitbart says, would jam it. I'm pretty bad out of position, so I don't like raising. Limp jam is okay, but I prefer jam. So th the idea with like limping, if you limp jam, think of the logic behind that. Do you Does he raise and then fold a hand that's better than ace-three off? So does he look down at like ace-seven, raise it, or ace-eight off, raise it, and then you jam and he goes, I'm going to fold. I think that is unlikely. So it's kind of an awkward, awkward hand. Whereas when we jam, does he look down at ace four, ace five, ace six, ace seven and call? Does he look down at twos and threes and call? Uh, Lanting says with limp jam, you get EV from their trash that raises versus limp, but can realize equity versus ace three off. Okay, so that's a good argument that we... It's not just about getting better hands to fold. Very often it is when you look at um, ICM Sims, uh, when you're when you're jamming, when you're not jamming for value, when you're jamming sort of quote unquote as a bluff. 
So, but you do deny, you know, like a hand like, I don't know, seven, six suited, it, that's not going to raise. <laughs> Bad example. Seven, two suited, it's got some equity against you and gets to play the whole hand in position and you, a three off doesn't really flop, flop that well, right? Uh, but also when we limp and it goes check, check, or sorry, limp, check, check he checks back. Then he's got all those suited hands like seven, six suited. So the, uh, yeah, he's got reasonable equity in that node. Um, limp jamming if opposition is aggressive, ISO jamming if tight. Uh, we haven't a high risk premium, so big blind does not ISO too wide. Does anybody want to guess what our risk premium is against the big blind? Closest to five percent, I guess. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. What do you guys? What do you guys think? Because if we, if he's not that high, then we would get to limp and call reasonably frequently, right? Because the risk premium. I mean, yes, of course, it, it uh, plays when we do anything, but it's most most obvious if we have to, if we face an all in, because then we have a, that price. Remember that equity, you know, whatever price we we're getting, plus we need that extra risk premium. All right. Lack of mystery says five. Um, we are our risk premium is going to be higher against the button than it is against the big blind. Uh, that's a really common thing that we'll see. That's um, yeah, like he's got less risk. Our risk premium, like we if we improve, we're still in third place, and the button is still in first place. If we win a hand against the big blind, what's going on there? Um, 30, 31. Yeah, so we would we we would go into second, right? Uh, let's 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 have, let's have a look at uh, what's going on here. Ace three off. Small blind versus big blind, 2%. So big E is on the money, I would say, in terms of risk premium. Um, and you can see our risk premium against the button, as I said, is much, much higher than it is against the big blind. It's 7.2 against the button and 2.3 against big blind. Big blind's risk premium against the button, though, is 18%, which is... So they're going to have to, you know, very play very cautiously here. Um, <laughs> let's have a look. Um, okay. So, offsuit a sex. Let's have a look. Offsuit a sex just loves the jam, doesn't it? Equilibrium. I think, as you can see, small small pairs and, and a sex hands. Um, the idea is in terms of like limp jamming. I think is going to come or limp calling a jam is going to come from a, the offsuit asex up here and then the suited asex and some other some other stuff as well so for example facing a facing a jam you can see look ace 10 off plus and you've got the suit aces and, and quite a lot of suit broadways as well so that risk premium of only a couple of percent is not really driving things massively um bowie says did you wager the biscuits i wagered all the biscuits yeah now let's uh, just confirm this I wagered all the biscuits. Um, and um, what else was I going to say? Oh yeah, so we were talking about like you know facing a facing a raise. Um, that's quite a big raise size. I mean, maybe on in hindsight, I would have changed this uh, raise size. Um, but again, like it's not a huge, huge difference from Chippy V. Looking at this. The only big difference is the fact that there's sort of less there's less money in the middle because there's only three players worth of antes, right? Rather than like a big blind ante or eight players worth of antes. Um so have a look. What's bottom calls for big blind? Guess it isn't too tight. Um let's uh, we can have a look at that in a moment. Um uh, but you can see, so I mentioned this about like limp calling or limp jamming, that's where it's mainly gonna come from. The offsuit asex hands are the ones that actually just go for it in the first place. Um, so hopefully you guys can see that. Um, I also mentioned about like if you jam a hand like this one, you're never getting a better hand to fold, right? You could actually get some better hands to, uh, sorry, some worse hands to call, but these are hands with pretty reasonable equity. Um, so 
this is what I was, I was talking about like in the in the new book is talking just thinking thinking it through in terms of logic it doesn't make sense to limp jam a hand like ace three off um where are we um because our opponent isn't gonna raise this the top of this range and then fold to a jam and they don't have um yeah they these hands that we would maybe try and target that i mean i still think they're probably uh, cool they don't have them because they're jamming them in the first place when we do jam, um, no, that's the wrong node. Um, this is big blinds calling range against a jam. So we do actually still generate some folds from slightly better hands, ace four off, ace five off, and we uh, can get called by worse as well. So kind of a mixture of the, the two ideas that we've talked about before. Um, but uh, yeah, shout out to everybody. Um, shout out to everybody who in the chat was giving a suggestion, giving an idea to um you know some 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 deeper thoughts than we should limp jam because it's better ev than limp call all right trying to to go one step further i think is uh is good uh bowie's just mentioned twos has to flick it in as well yeah i thought i wondered actually if twos and threes would, would start would start folding um so i got that wrong uh big blind versus small blind yeah i mean their risk premium against us is just tiny so 1.3 percent and uh yeah we have to call with pairs. All right. So we get that one through. Um, okay. So not sure what happened in the meantime, but now we only have 10 bigs and small blind calls. Um, call or fold in the chat. Call or fold in the chat, but also tell me why you would do what you would do. So on YouTube, um, we've got call. We're in Chippy V now. Uh, we're not quite in Chippy V. We're we're three-handed. So chip, we'd be we would be in Chippy V if it was heads up, right? But uh, this is final three. But we are. I mean, to be honest, you could be right that it's close because we literally have ten bigs. And I mean, the thing is though, calling and doubling up doesn't really improve things significantly. I'm not trying to tell you one way or the other. Um, Bowie says I call fairly trivially, and I think I think this is one of those hands where if you've done some ICM final table study for like ten bigs blind versus blind, you are gonna know the answer. And I always think this. I was watching um, Only Connect. I feel like middle age is coming at me fast. By the way, um, watching Only Connect. The thing with any kind of quiz is that if you know the answer, it's easy. It's like a test at school. If you've got absolutely no idea, this is where you know you you need to to do some to do some study. So I think if you've studied this spot, you will know the answer. If you've not studied this spot, you might think, oh, I swear, I've got king seven, but you know I'm not really sure what to do uh, in in this situation. Um, Biggie says interesting hand, but I don't know chip leader jamming range versus three of three. Okay, Mister E, I think we're ahead of enough of our opponent's jams to call. Um, and again, like don't forget that we just need we just need enough equity right we don't even need to be ahead of enough of our opponent's range we need 44 percent plus whatever the risk premium is and it could be really small but we are facing the bigger of the two stacks so our risk premium is going to be higher against this player than it is against the button uh we should call uh call you're by far the shortest stack and he's raising very wide no icm on you really well we'll have a look at that suit king is very high, far ahead of his range uh joan gray pasta says call um all right Cool. Yeah, I, I think this is I agree with, uh, with with Bowie. I think it's a it's a pretty straightforward call. But um, but it's in there because I do think it's one of those spots where we uh, I see some people make mistakes and they fold big blind versus small blind. Look, 4.6 percent this time. Now. That is interesting, I think. What was the risk premium in this last hand, the ace three off against the bigger stack? Yeah, it was 7.2. Okay, we've got 19 big blinds, fair enough. So the idea that we there's no ICM 
is not true. Let's just make sure I've clicked on the right thing. So our risk premium, that's definitely ICM because we've got there's a 4.6% risk premium. So we need whatever that price was, as I mentioned before, 44% plus 4.6. We need 48.6% against his range. So again, we don't need to be ahead of enough of his range. We need to have 48.6% equity to uh, to call here, right? And that's uh, that's essentially essentially it. But I do think it's a, a common misconception that there's no ICM at this point because you can see like this number is not zero, right? What on earth happened there? That was weird. Um, we've still got the sim. That was so weird. I've never seen it do that before. Um, 4.6%. Anyway, this is how wide the small blind gets to jam. So you can imagine how wide we get to call. And uh, yeah, we should be calling king do suited and king five off and all pairs and queen eight off, etc., etc. So pretty, pretty trivial as uh, as we saw in the chat. Um, how many of you are calling this wide though? 419 DMC, how's it going? It says call chip leader can be super aggressive because our stack doesn't threaten his stack. Mm -hmm. Hands up if you are calling queen eight off and uh, jack eight suited and 10 nine suited and queen seven suited in this spot. Let's see you, who are you? While you guys think about that, let's, um, Lanting says not brave enough. Not brave enough. I mean, let's have a look at the EV of a call, 57 cents. $1.12, $1.95. I mean, I should, probably shouldn't do it in uh, dollar terms because no one's looking down at this and going, ooh, yeah, 57 cents, I'll make that call. Um, Pretty good with the suited stuff. I get nitty with the offsuit hands. I think that's fair enough. Not sure I'm finding the calls with queen eight suited. Uh, I'd have thrown up with queen eight off, called queen nine off reluctantly. I think that's uh, some nice honesty from everyone in the chat. Right, let's uh, let's, let's let's keep the momentum going. Uh, we call, uh, but we don't care about results. But there are more hands, so we must have uh, we must have won. Um, okay, so some interesting situations. My the reason why I marked this one is I want to know where's the line for min raising versus jamming where's the line for min raising versus jamming um so um, we've got a really similar hand coming up as well I think as they say off yeah it's the very next hand actually it's almost exactly the same spot 15 bigs so we should be able to learn a thing or two about the difference between suit aces and offsuit asex, 15 big blinds, shortest stack, three of three on a final table. Um, where are we? Yeah, do we min raise this hand? Do we jam it? Do we min raise call? Do we min raise fold? Do we fold in the first place? Uh, okay. Kent touch this says jam low pairs and wheel suited aces. So he'll now says, great question. A panic jam in this spot. Sajid, no. Would min raise call with ace nine suited? Minty says, ace eight suited. Gets closer into two thirds of a big blind instead of one third. A seven suited, weird. Uh, a seven suited should be a raise first into call a jam and ace eight off a jam. Walk says, min raise call. Oh, you guys just love the min raise in juice, right? Hmm, this is uh, it's going to be an interesting one. Um, don't forget that we like for anyone who's still believing that there's no risk premium, there's no ICM here when we min raise and get jammed on. There, of course, is. I mean, and it's going to be bigger versus the big blind than it is the the small blind. Now, sometimes we see jams in these situations when we don't want to have to raise call, and jamming just ends up being higher EV than than raise folding or yeah, raise calling. Both says higher risk premium of raise calling into chip leader big blind than second is what I meant. Um, 
Okay, so I misunderstood what you said. <laughs> Let's try and understand this again. Gets closer into... Oh, okay, yeah, so when we're three of three. Okay, I see what you mean. But I, I do think it's closer when there's uh, bigger uh, antis out there as well. Um, uh, let's have a look. I think I'm min-raising very little of my range here. don't think I want to induce from either small blind or big blind. Jam Jamaral Natu is... Uh, thanks for the follow. Um, I see your rocks. Uh, thanks for the follow as well. Missed that. Um, let's have a look. Uh, I think open jam the ace-7 suited and induce ace-9 suited plus. Interesting. Uh, I'm pretty indifferent here. What did I do? I jammed, but I wasn't sure about it. Let's find out. Oh, look at this. Bowie on the money. Indifferent. Let's go. Um, jamming's fine. Min ray's fine. We did some stuff actually a couple of weeks ago where we adjusted calling ranges and responses to min raises and things like that. We're not going to do that today. Um, but if we look at this jamming range, I would say that this is when we min raise. I would say the big blind is not jamming anywhere near as aggressively as this which means that we get we don't get punished when we min raise we end up min raising a bit more but also some of the hands that min raise to induce actually become better jams because like ace king off for example because we're not getting jammed on as frequently so if we change this uh, this jamming range i believe that we would raise more hands so maybe these offsuit nines and the sevens we could still potentially jam the broadways and suited stuff here and, and pairs. But I think hands that like nines and ace king off suddenly would become better jams because they're not making the EV of inducing hand like, well, whatever we just saw that was wild. Suited kings, suited queens, um, stuff like king four off, stuff like that. Um, okay. Um Let's have a look at our risk premium just uh, to put to bed the, the myth that there's no ICM or anything. Um, our risk premium against a small blind, 2.2 against a big blind, 6.6. .6. Small blind versus big blind is obviously huge. He's going to have a real, uh, real, real problem. Probably doesn't get to, in fact, let's just have a quick look at this. I can't imagine he gets a raising range in this spot, right? Because his risk premium is so high. So does he just limp everything? Uh, this is, by the way, oh, I'll well, look at that. Pretty much pure limp. Um, this is something that I really encourage you to do as well, guys. When you're running your own sims, it's very easy to go, right, I jammed a seven suit. I mean, sometimes, I, I know when I first started studying this kind of stuff, I would jam, you get called by fours or whatever, and you lose, and you're like, oh, I don't know if I made the right decision. Maybe I could have been raised fold. I'm not sure what I should do, guys. Um... <sighs> That happens a lot at the start of, of your journey because you remember the hands where you lost, especially on a final table, right? But we want to get you to a point where you're actually thinking of thinking things through a bit further than that and not just worrying about, you know, busting. But also going, oh, we've run this whole sim. It's taken several hours or a day to run. Let's try and learn something new as well. Okay, if we fold it, a small blind only gets a limping range. And then think about why that's happening. Okay. So that's really really important. Um, who, some of the some of some of you rofflers wanted to uh, raise call a seven suit, and you would be correct. Um, <laughs> so there we go. Um, but again, that's relying on them shoving. Uh, I think the ASEX, I think I, I feel like players do shove those uh, the the bottom end of the ASEX hands. I think the king X and queen X is uh, less frequent. Um, who was in the big blind? He's a reg, I think. But I'm not sure if he's shoving queen six suited. So uh, so tough, tough one. Um, race versus ace seven suited in call jam because we are still crushing the chip leader jamming range. Yes, at equilibrium, but in practice, I'm not sure. Which is why I think that we actually should raise more frequently and fold and, still, and then jam a little bit stronger. That would be my adjustment. Um, Let's have a look here. Um, we've got some loads of comments coming through on YouTube. Uh, we are streaming on both YouTube and Twitch. So let me just read some of these questions. Min raise this hand, then call versus the big blind. Shove, think got to be more wary against the small blind. Even though our risk premium is lower against the small blind than it is against the big blind. Um, in fact, we should probably just have a look at um, 
yeah, well, I mean, their small blind's not going to rip because he can't shove 45 big blinds through. But uh, a7 suit against a small blind just becomes a fold. Um, so I think, actually, it's the other way around. We want to be more... Oh, so I see what you mean. No, you're right. It, it, we are more wary against the against the small blind because they're going to have a, a stronger range. Um, good. Yeah, absolutely. Hassan says, Hi, guys. I don't think I have a min-raise range 12 bigs and under. I think 12 big blinds plus we can now have min-raise to induce and min-raise and fold. We are also only one double up from being joint second near enough. Cool. Yep. Yeah. So you can absolutely have a min raising range up to, I don't know what the number, sorry, down to six, five bigs, six bigs. What do we reckon? I'm sure there's uh, lots of people in the chat who've, who've looked at this, or well, at least one person. What's the what's the minimum we could raise fold? Five, well, I mean, just got to, just got to just got to ask the uh, the person the 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 person writing the foreword for my new book what the smallest <laughs> the lowest number of big blinds you can raise folders. Uh, he'd probably say about six. So I'm going to go with five. <laughs> uh, I don't. I, I've not run. I've not run too many uh, five big blind sims to to know the answer here, but. Um, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure you can, but like it's definitely less than ten. There are some, there's there's some sims on the uh, DTO preflop where you, there are some min raises off short stacks. So. Biggie says yes. Of course, the EV of raise first thing call versus jam would be lower than HRC. Yep. Uh, Bowie says yeah, going to be down there somewhere. Cool. Um, but yeah, you can have min raises under twelve bigs for sure. Um, in practice, again, like I'll, you know, I'll keep on saying this word. Vesku Veskuma, thanks for the follow. I keep saying this word like in practice versus you know in theory, but I do think it's important not to just go. Oh, well, the, the solver says we should raise raise fold against the small blind, raise call against the big blind, and then we look at the jamming range from the big blind and we think this is just absolutely no way that he's jamming this aggressively. Um, so there's no only with ICM, right? Um, that's a good question. I feel like there's more min raise min raising with ICM like on a final table than there is in chippy V sims. I think that's probably fair. But again, I haven't run an exhaustive list. Um what did we learn from this hand? Let's try and keep the pace going. So A7 suits fine. We can shove eights. Um I do think that's a, a po good point actually. That we there were a decent number of hands like eight sevens and threes and stuff where we can just jam and I would probably have jammed Ace King off and raise folded ace eight off and raise folded a bit more down here and maybe raise folded ace seven suited seeing the sim but mm. uh people are way too shove happy in general even chip ev so that's all i'll say but we but we're giving the secrets but only a little bit and going to encourage you to get your own sims run uh, I don't think you should. I don't think you should have any min raise folds with five to six bigs with no ICM involved. If anyone thinks you do, I'd be curious to hear the scenario. Cool, but there's. I mean, w what games are you playing when there's only chip EV involved? Anyway, let's move on. Oh, now we get an ace eight off, and it's exact, pretty much the exact same spot. Um. Well, I mean, there's not too much to talk about here. We'll uh, we'll load the sim. And uh, should be pretty pretty similar, and it looks to me like to be exactly the same. I mean, pretty much, right? Pretty much the same. Uh, ace eight off is exactly the same as ace seven suited. So, one thing I notice when I mark hands is I always find the hand on the edge. I'm I'd be interested to know how many of you, when you mark hands, they're right on the edge of like between min raise and, and jam, because ace seven suited was ace eight off is. I think it's rare to find a hand that's just pure jam when you mark it because you've got a better understanding and better idea. So like ace queen off, I would just know to jam. Um, but I do think it's uh, it's interesting. There might be something, some kind of science behind behind that. Um, anyway, um, oh yeah, this is a good one. This is a good one, right? Don't know whether to t show you what I did first or to hear your thoughts. We have a few more big blinds now. We've actually got 19 big blinds. Raise call, raise fold, jam, or fold. 
I think those are the four options. I'm not getting into limping today. <laughs> Sajed, no. 3x open and fold to a jam. Ooh, 3x. Why 3x? Why are we suddenly going to go to a 3x and put another big blind out there? Bowie says fold pre. WWWRR WWW says raise fold. Chris Callahan says raise fold. Good to see, Chris. Uh, Biggie says fold, in my opinion, or raise fold. Um, Min raise fold from Kent touched this. On YouTube, uh, maybe if the big blind is tied to raise first in fold. Tie 10 to fold, 419 DMC. Probably fold ace two off and sometimes fold ace three off, but min raise this hand. Okay. Alex Blaine, how's it going, Alex? Uh, says raise fold. Right, let's, um, let's take a look at the sim. And then I'll, and then I'll tell you what I did because uh, we'll see how close I am. Um, Hmm. Ace four off. Pure fold. A seven off. Pure fold. A six off. Pure fold. So everyone that said fold in this situation, congrats to you. You are you are the best players. You probably don't need my new book. Um Ace Ace um Because you know what to do with Ace Four off. Um let's have a let's have a quick look at what's going on here. Um our risk premium now against the big blind is it's starting to creep up there, isn't it? 8%. So if we raise too much in this situation and we face a 3-bet, we're going to have to fold quite frequently. Uh, Bowie says, very over raise first in did spot, to be fair. Lanting says, Bowie showing off. As BB, you should really attack lots of people there. Absolutely. Um, so this is, this, is just, this is just why, right? Um, so facing facing the jam, we even in a really tight range, we're still folding uh, folding quite a lot. We're folding two thirds of our range. You can see fourteen point two versus seven point one. We're only opening twenty one point two percent of hands in the first place, right? So yeah, we got to be really careful with uh, with opening. Um, well, let's see what I did. Oh. Oh, okay. So yeah, I was fairly confident that this is going to be a fold. Um, very happy to see that the sim agrees. Um, having said all of that, we have just said, do we think the big blind is going crazy? And this this is the jamming range against a 21% polarized opening range. All right, just uh, if, if you're unfamiliar with the terms like polarized and condensed, then the polarized range is the hand, is the basically the range in red, so hands in red, and the condensed range is the hands in purple. Um, and the general idea is that you would, I'll show you on this one, you would raise call the hands in green and you would raise fold the hands in white. And these hands in grey you've already jammed to begin with. Um, why ace 10 call but ace jack fold? Uh, ace jack off doesn't fold, it just jammed pre, I think. Yeah, it's 100% a jam pre. It's not a fold. It's not a fold because you've already jammed it. Uh, <laughs> Ian says, Gaz, totally put this one in to brag. Um, Look, uh, you know, I've got a book coming out soon. I need to know, I need to show you that I know what I'm talking about when it comes to final table stuff, okay? Um, <laughs> uh, okay, right. Although, to be honest, I'm sure there have been some some hands. Do we see any hands? We've not seen any hands where I've, where I've made a mistake yet. But, um, oh, the A7 suited. Maybe a mistake against the... No, I don't know. Maybe it's a ma mistake against players that are not. Uh, three betting aggressively enough could be. Ken touches says risk premium higher than I thought. Clearly, yeah. So the again the risk premium is always going to be higher against the person with the most chips. That's a really common thing that you will see. Um, so just watch out for uh, for that. So you need to be aware of that. And when you're opening here, you are just going to get punished. So all right, time. I just said. You haven't made any mistakes on this final table. Pre-flop, I think we're pretty good. I'm not, you know, <laughs> and modest. No, pre-flop, I think we're, we're doing all right. Post-flop, if you've got kids in the room, please cover their ears. Post-flop might be a bit of a shit show. Um, let's see what happens here. So limp, check back. I think that's fine. Bet, call, seems fine. I don't think we get to raise this hand. Uh, actually, interestingly, I, I was kind of surprised to see this guy limp, so I don't think he's going to have too many limps here. Um, 
Laco Misty says, I feel very tricked with the only, I only mark hands that are right on the edge comment. Well, there's the idea of the right on the edge, right? So like offsuit asex. I knew that the offsuit asex were going to be, uh, going to be folds. Anyway, um, we call and the turn we bet. Um, we'll look at this in a moment. I think this is fine. We're betting for value. We can get called by worse. And then the river, I think, is a really interesting spot. The reason why I marked this one, well, for two reasons. One was I'm not sure if it's too thin to go for value on this river. And the second one is I'm not sure if it's too thin to go for value on this river because he jammed on me and I don't know what to do. Um, at fold, I think, well, it's probably a mix between fold and call, but in practice always fold um so yeah i think it's too thin to I, I think it's potentially too thin but i feel like i might be only saying that because i got jammed on right let's have a look uh men of luck says what if people see rejam a lot as the big blind and they start calling a lot more should we start tightening up um hmm I mean, it's to get. I, I guess if they start raise calling like hands that are really poor, then I guess so. Yeah. Uh, Ian says I've got to go. Thank you very much as always, guys. You're welcome. Good to see you later, everyone. Fuzzy says bye, Ian. E. Good luck. Good luck on the grind. Uh, check out Ian Simpson's uh, live stream if you haven't already. He's streaming later on. Bowie says lol. WTF? Does this guy have? My guess is um, Ace Three. Nah, he would just jam that pre. Uh, six three of spades. <laughs> it's very check call two big blinds check jam, limp pre one big blind should a five lead on the turn after check call. He didn't check call flop. He bet flop and I called. Let's just go through. Let's just rewind the hand. He limps, which is I don't think he's going to do much limping in the sim. He bets. We call. He checks. He check calls the turn and then. Check jams the river. My only guess is that he's checked a hand like 10 5 or 5 deuce. Yeah. Team 6 3 of spades or 10 5. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Um, he could have a 5, but I think a lot of 5s will just continue. Um, I folded and um, that was a very sad hand, really. Um, Let's see if 10-8 is too thin to bet. ICM is a conspiracy. Oh, you're in the wrong stream. <laughs> you're in the wrong stream. You, this is not the stream for you. Um, Dino Mopins, ace three suited. Could be. It'd be interesting to see what um, all those hands do pre-flop. Um, let's get into it. I have run this for pre and, and post. Um, what did we have? 10-8 off. So the the annoying thing, something that I think your know, players can understand is that risk premiums pre-flop, right? I think it's harder to sort of think about it post-flop and still and and recognize that it's still a thing, and that's why I think that the ten eight is too thin to vet for value because we get to a point when we are having to overfold versus a jam. Not that he's probably going to exploit that. But we, yeah, it's just awkward. Um, just some fantasy, fantasy land nonsense. Um, <laughs> so Hill now says independent conspiracy model. <laughs> uh, okay, so eight point five percent. Let's um, let's see what's going on here. So bearing in mind average premium against him is eight point whatever percent. Um, he does a bit of limping. This is, uh, I mean, all right. Let's see. 10 8 off. Oh, some jamming. You can actually jam and uh, generate folds from lots of better hands. Uh, okay, fair enough. Uh, but checking looks to be fine as well. Jamming some offsuit asex and some pairs and some suit aces and a bit of stuff down here that doesn't interact with um, this, you know, because he's folded all of these hands to begin with. And so we can get lots of better hands to fold. 
Um, okay, let's look at the... Is that in here? Oh, it's already loaded. <clears throat> okay, so this is what our sim looks like. Hopefully you guys can see this, okay. Turn it off, always gonna call. There's not too much raising, but it's nice to see the best 10x go for a raise. We don't have ace 10 because we would have raised or jammed pre. Um, we can bit raise a bit of 10 five and five deuce and some other stuff as well. Uh, five of hearts, five of hearts, he checks and our hand is a mix. We can bet 10 nine a lot more frequently. This is actually really interesting because King 10 off now checks, Queen 10 off checks, Jack 10 off checks, Jack 10 suited checks, Queen 10 suited checks most of the time. King 10 suited on the other hand just likes to, uh, likes to bet. Okay. Hmm. 5x is obviously the most obvious bet in here. If I click on this one, you can see a lot of 5x. But yeah, 10 9, 10 8, there is some betting with those hands. We've got some. Spade bluffs as well. Um, okay. So Bowie with some uh, some good observations here, I think. It's very weirdly shaped because our value is so trips centric. The 10x betting region is protected by the 5x. Uh, and is more seeking equity denial. Yeah. So yeah, going for the bet doesn't seem doesn't seem too bad. Um, not sure about this raise size. Um, but we'd have to continue versus a raise. But that's not what happened. Let's uh, let's see. Four of clubs. 45, 55. Okay. 10-8 off is just a check. So now we can bet our best 10x where the kicker is higher than the 10 and we've got to check the other 10x uh, and we get to jam all the 5x which is obviously really cool and we get to jam a 6-3 and we get to jam some other 3x hands as well so you can see I mean that's a straight <laughs> um some 3x hands down here anything else yeah so so I'm just trying to find some some bluffs in this spot because I think it's very easy to find the value, but less easy to find the bluffs. Um, it's just a function of a very thin small blind limp first into yeah okay I think that's uh, I think that's good um, eight six off so we got some bluffs from like three x and six x and nine x eight x. 86 off, 98 off, 97 off, all one stuff in it, one spade stuff. Um, it is with the offsuit stuff, yeah, because we peel those on the flop, and uh, the suit stuff is actually hand, like the diamonds instead. But I guess it's the, basically the same thing, isn't it? It's three spades or three diamonds, kind of idea. Um, but actually not bluffing with with two spades, uh, blocking some folds. Um, cool. So anyway, it was too it was too thin. I bet it's still profit. Is it? I mean, I'm gonna say it's still profitable, but it's if it, it it's not more profitable than checking, so it doesn't make sense. Um, what else was I gonna say about this hand? Oh yeah, so oh well, the other thing is we bet half pot, and uh, that's not a sizing that's used. Um, so I want to have a look how this is constructed. So we've got, in fact, I'm gonna use Range Explorer. And look at this. Uh, so big bets are basically trips and better. That makes sense. I mean, polarized. The bigger the bigger you bet, the more polarized your range is. So I really like this function, by the way. If you've never seen it before, it's a really good way of understanding polarized versus anything else strategies. <laughs> um, but you click on the biggest bet size, you can see trips plus bet. Nothing. None of these other hands is good enough to bet for value for that big, uh, which is how big? 1.7 X pot. I'm missing some of these follows. Let's uh, let's get a few of these in. Uh, Rack Racken 1122, thanks for the follow. Poker Click, Wazil, thanks for the 
links that are follow. Uh, H Denry, thanks for the follow as well. All right. Um, and then we get some bluffs. So I always like to look at these because I think, again, the value is easy, but here's, here's the bluffs. Um, so blocking some some calls, I guess, um, and then we want to look at the yeah the sort of the medium the medium range ninety percent, and we've got our best ten x in there. We've still got some trips hands that want to do this, but maybe some of the, the weaker ones, and then we've got some full houses as well, and quads a little bit of the time. So yeah. But interesting, yeah. I mean, my size is not ever used. If we did, went slightly bigger, um, we don't call with any 10x, I don't think. Uh, in fact, some of our 5x is in diff starting to be indifferent, which is pretty sick. <laughs> and smaller sizes, we, yeah, basically fold 10 9 off a lot. Um, okay, cool. Let's uh, let's move on. So just, just too thin. I mean, we haven't really explored why it's too thin. Uh, I want to try and try and get this. So his when we go when we bet, we get called by some some weaker tenex, and some ace high is going to call. But we also get called by some better tenex, which I think is why it's too thin, and he can still have a five, a decent at a decent clip. Um, it's calling king high and queen high though. That seems a bit all right, fair enough. Uh, but any, yeah, I, said, I think that's the idea that we're just going to get called or raised too frequently or called by a better hand, raised and be put into a horrible spot. So we can just check back. What kind of hands did our opponent raise the river with? Well, we used the wrong bet size. So the problem here is that we're going to go down a node that doesn't exist. Pocket tens, 5x, and probably not too many bluffs. Um, well, there must be some. Third pair, a four. And a tiny bit of this. But you can see, like, the number of combos is just, uh, just, this is not, just not a thing. So, yeah. They're going to have, yeah, they still got some really strong hands in this range, so. Fair enough. Um, yeah, so we just don't get enough value from weaker hands, basically, when we bet our hand. Is this Pio, Sim, Chip EV? Nope, it's ICM. So HRC now has this amazing thing where you can uh, export the selected node to Pio, which is what I've done in this hand. And then in Pio, you can import the model uh, in here. And you can see I've got some in there already. And we're going to do another post-flop sim in a moment. Um, okay, how are we doing? Uh, if you haven't done so already and you're watching on Twitch and you want to, hit the follow button. If you're watching on YouTube and you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button. Think about leaving a comment or um, anything below, uh, if you can do that when it's live. I'm not sure if you can, but maybe you're watching the replay on YouTube and you haven't subscribed yet. Well, hit the subscribe button and drop a comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what we're studying today. Um, these sessions I do every single Monday at four o'clock. It's a different kind of theme, like focus each week. So we do ICM, post flop, uh, sorry, like ICM, post flop with Pio, uh, some DTO drills, and uh, I don't know, we did some HRC and some software stuff as well. Uh, Fuzzy Ferret says, drop a like on YouTube. Drop a like on YouTube. Right, um, where are we? Let's see how we're doing. Oh yeah, this is the last hand, guys. And I mentioned before, pre-flop, not bad. Post-flop, well, let's just have a look. Okay, well, I didn't recognize this as a 2.1 big blind open. I don't think it's gonna matter too much, but most of my sims I just sell up for min-raising, so. It might be slight, like a tiny bit different, but not too much. Um, always calling here. I think that's good. And are you ready for poor play 101? I almost like, sometimes I'm like, 
Should I even show this hand? This seems really bad. Um, but, like, we don't just want to do the hands that we played played well, right? We want to to discuss hands that we played poorly as well and see what, what on earth is, uh, is going on. Um, so I decided to uh, raise here. Um, <laughs> have you ever played a hand? Have you ever reviewed a hand and gone, I don't know what I'm doing? Why did I do that? This is a good example of uh, of, <laughs> of, uh, of that idea. I like I looked at it when I was reviewing it. And I thought, what what am I doing? And I tell you the, the the other thing is the button's range. The button is actually really really strong. Now, yes, okay, a two is probably going to be pretty reasonable. Um, like because we have a pair now, so uh, he might not have a pair. But I'll show you in a minute. I'm fairly confident the button's opening range here is going to be incredibly strong because we have a short stack and the small blind can just three bet jam or three bet so aggressively. The button's risk premium against the small blind is going to be huge. So I reckon the button can only open like 20% of hands. So here we are, check raising bottom pair into a fairly strong range that's going to include all the ASX hands. Um, I don't know, guys. I don't know what was happening in this uh, in this hand. Um, so anyway, check, raise, call, and then you get to the turn. I'm like, right, well, what do we do now? And I think this is this is something that I see in myself, and also in I hope that was the right use of the word myself. By the way, I see it in me, and I see it in people I work with as well. Is where we go down a node and we're like, I don't play this spot often enough to know what the to do in this uh, in this situation. On reflection, I think jamming would be reasonable because we can deny equity to diamonds and club hands. Obviously, not ace ex of clubs. So that's never folding. An ace is never folding. But I would it'd be interesting to know what you do with queen jack of clubs or king queen of diamonds. I think those hands should actually fold. So I quite like jamming here now that we've got here. But I think flop is just a pretty straightforward check call. But there's some other ideas in the in the chat like jamming. Um, but I checked and folded. <laughs> oh guys, what a absolute car crash of a hand. Um, Let's uh, let's find out. Let's have a look here. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, we should look at the preflop sim as well. Um, whoa, fifteen percent. Stop it. Let me see this. Yeah, I mean, it's we always we knew it was going to be high with us only having thirteen bigs and button having thirty three. Have you have you ever seen a tight opening range here as tight as this? I, I mean, there's a chance that Button is way overdoing this. Um, <laughs> Bowie with some uh, some some choice language. Um, <laughs> he thinks that check jam might exist. I mean, we'll we, we'll have a look. Um, look how strong this range is, though. Do we want to check jam? Kent touch this said, "Is that an under the gun range?" No, it's a button opening range in this particular spot. I'll just show you the spot again. So he's comfortably in second. He has a really high risk premium against a small blind. And he only gets to open 15% of hands. I mean, goodness me. Can we still defend? What's our, what's our risk premium against him? 1.3%. Okay, we're loving it. We're loving it. We're definitely flicking it in. Yes, we do get to fold some suited hands though, which is interesting. That's probably a function of a couple of things, a tight opening range and a tiny risk premium. And, and this is more than a couple of things now, uh, only three players worth of antis. I think if you're playing with a big blind anti, you probably flick this in. Um, that's what I would say. Uh, also just a collision, isn't it? Goes jam call infinite when you fold. Okay, yeah, good point. Uh, let's have a look at the small blinds uh, response. So it gets to jam a lot of hands. Uh, 
presumably when they do jam, Button can only call with the best hands. Yeah, so anytime you... Well, he has to fold Ace-King off. Probably not happening. I think players just, just can't fold Ace-King off in this situation. Uh, well, he has to start folding Ace-King off. Um, but whenever you see jams with like suited kings, suited aces, very frequently it's like the calling range is kings plus ace, kings suited. So something to, to look out for. Um, yeah, I mean, some queens in there and, and stuff as well, but pretty interesting to see. Uh, what is also interesting is, is the small blind going to be aware that the, the button is opening tight and therefore only flatting tens through like sevens and th bits threes and twos as well? I think this is one of those spots where you can kind of get confused as to what to do. Like three betting is not going to be unprofitable, but you can see flatting is, is worth a lot more. Um, so again, just a function of understanding what the opening range looks like. And if you three bet tens and then face a jam, you've probably got to call it off. Um, look at that range. Let's see. Is it profitable? Just. Yeah. But, you know, it's not in there. So, um, yeah, that is uh, that is really interesting. I would really love to just love exploring some of these. Just looking at the, like the induce range in this situation against a 15% opening range is jacks plus ace king. Right? So it's jacks plus ace king. And then it makes it easy because you just call those hands when you when your opponent uh, opponent jams. But then we could you know go into another question is like, do you think they four bet jam these hands? If it's a recreational player, I, I don't expect them to in this situation open, face a three bet here, see us on 12 big blinds and go, oh yeah, I think ace five suited would be a nice hand to rip here. I think they just fold. I think they fold these hands, all of these hands down here. So all of a sudden, the value of calling with ace king off goes is going to go down. Um, but, you know, three bet fold ace king off at your peril. Um, what a degen range against a 15% opening range. Um, yeah, but it's just a degen range. You understand why it's doing that though, right? Because he opens 15% and can only call 2.2% against a jam. And by jamming the ace X and king X hands, you block some of the hands that can can call and have better equity with uh, against the calling range, right? Then if you jammed like pocket eights, for example, although that does jam, so by example. Um, anyway, what happens in the sim? We obviously don't lead. Hopefully you guys would know not to do that, but our equity here is so abysmal against a 15% opening range. Um, and they should be betting all the time. You can see I've only used one bet size because the if they use a really big bet, like three quarters here, they'll be all in on the turn. If they use a geometric sizing, it's going to be like 35 or 40% pot. And they didn't. Uh, I would be surprised if they have this and then a biggest bet size. I think this is just going to be the bet size they they choose. And uh, 3D suited is, uh, looks like pure call. There is some raising, not a lot of jamming. Um, what's the EV on a jam? The EV on a jam is losing us money. We don't want to do that. Um, raising is profitable, but calling is better. What kind of hands are we... Let's have a look. Look at our raising range. That's not what I want to do. I want to do this. No, I want to do this. So interestingly, we do have sets. Some two pair to raise. We are ra we raise our best top pair and a six of clubs. I mean, that makes sense. So it's just hands with a lot of equity. That's cool. You don't have any under pairs. Second pairs. Raising some seven X actually. And third pairs, and some king highs, I guess flush draws, yep, flush draws. And then some nothing stuff, which will be draws as well. These are gut shots and various other things. Um, okay, so there is some raising. This is the geometric size, I think, like 3E. Um, what else is I gonna say? Oh yeah, if we raise and we get jammed on, we end up folding all of the 7X and calling with the flush draws and the ace x. I mean, that makes sense, right? I don't think that's too challenging to understand. But 
interesting 7x folds. But yeah, oh, we can actually get eights to fold without a club and nines, well, starting to anyway, uh, and denying some equity as well. Um, let's carry on through. The turn was the five of diamonds, of course it was. And uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I said about jamming, and I, if we did get to this node, jamming is the highest DV line. Uh, Alex Halmy says, hi, Gareth. Hey, Alex, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. Thanks for being a first time chatter. Uh, yeah, if we did jam, yeah, we're getting clubs and diamonds to fall. That's what I was kind of thinking about. Um, but we didn't do that. And we're also, look at, look at this, we can get queens to fold and kings to fold and some better hands to fold. Obviously an ace is never folding, of course it isn't. But that's, uh, that is quite interesting. I wonder if uh, if people would fold like king, queen of clubs here against the, because yes, this is what, 68% 60, pot. But I think a lot of players look at it and they're like, well, that's only seven and a half bigs, <laughs> like in a weird way. Um, anyway, yeah, shoving could be good. Uh, affecting bet call, I assume we can't do anything. Could we have called it off? Ooh, <clears throat> excuse me. Ooh, um, three deuce is a call. So we made how many mistakes in this hand? Three? Raising the flop is better to call. Should have jammed the turn, but we checked. And we fold I folded on the turn and we can uh, we can call. Um yeah, only only three mistakes. Excellent. Uh, not bad <laughs> in one hand. Uh okay. So lots of lots of takeaways. Let's uh let's Let's see what happens. I think sometimes it can get challenging to know what we would do on the turn. Um, mm, some interesting bet sizes here. Wow. So we can just, I mean, yeah, we have a pair and a draw, right? So we can just check call, flop, check call, turn, and decide, probably check fold the river on many cards that don't improve us. Um, that feels a bit grim, doesn't it? Let's, uh, oh, we actually get to do some lead. Oh, I mean, that's a bad card, bad example. <laughs> I want to see which hands, uh, which runouts we can, um, like, they should be really obvious, right? Okay, cool. Yeah. So when we improve the two power, are straight. And that's what I thought. So really, yeah. I mean, he's not always going to bluff, right? He's not always going to bluff, and we don't know what the river card's going to be. But um, so, like on this run out, I mean, looking at this, jams for value. Jams is a bluff. <laughs> uh, okay. Occasionally, we beat king queen off king jack. I was trying to find some hands we actually beat that don't end up just bluffing in the first place but it's yeah it's just king high uh there's some king queen suited and king jack suited as well i guess so that's uh yeah it's not all uh it's not all doom and gloom on this on this river um so yeah fun a few big takeaways so there's quite a, there were quite a few pre-flop spots um so yeah, when you're doing your own review and stuff like this, it's important to summarize. I do think it's important to be kind to yourself. Um, I've obviously joked about you know mucking up in these uh, in these couple of hands, and, and yeah, I can I can comfortably say pre-flop is way better than post-flop, um, and I think that's probably fairly true for everyone else as well. Um, that post-flop is going to be a lot worse than uh, than than, than pre-flop, but we do a lot more pre-flop than post-flop. So if you get really good at pre-flop, that's kind of half the game maybe not quite half, half. but uh post lot yeah we they, there's some there's some huge uh, edges to be gained and i think that there were a couple of spots in here that i wanted to you know to improve on and and that's why we do the study and i don't want to just show you spots that i'm getting perfectly all the time there's no benefit for that like i want to make this content for you guys but i also want to study myself i don't just want to go oh well here's some content and i'll teach you something 
I want to use this. How long have we been on? An hour and 20 minutes. I want to use this time to, to learn some stuff as well. So it's, uh, yeah, hopefully that makes that makes sense. If you haven't done so, um, hit that follow button if you're watching on Twitch. Um, subscribe on YouTube. Leave a like. Um, what else? Oh, I have a free Facebook group. If you would like to join my free Facebook group, then go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash poker profits. Uh, I'm going to actually post in uh, command FB group into the chat on Twitch. And there's the link to join my Facebook group. There are some questions to answer. If you don't answer the questions, I don't know anything about you. I'm probably not going to let you into the group. There's over 4,500 members in the group learning about MTTs. And so, yeah, answer the questions. Like I said, if you don't answer the questions and you're wondering why you haven't been let into the group, then you know the answer. Okay. Biggie says, thank you, Gareth. See you soon. Great content as always. Appreciate that. Um, thank you for the comments. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to be it. Shout out to you guys for being here. You turned up. You got it done. And we learned a lot together. Um, I will... I will see you next Wednesday. Next Wednesday? I will see you next week, but I'm playing live poker this weekend for the first time since August, and I'm going abroad for it. So if there's no stream, I didn't make it back. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I um, it should still be on next week. I don't know what the topic is. can't remember, but it won't be ICM, final table stuff. It'll be something else. And uh, but yeah, I'll be back uh, next Monday, four o'clock. All of these streams and replays are available on YouTube. Just go to the live button and you'll see all the previous live streams. And uh, that's it. Lanty says, I nice one, lad. Jesse Will says, but I just got here. Jesse, you got to turn up on time. It's four o'clock we start. 419 DMC, it's a great session, Gareth. Thank you. Uh, Lanty said, live poker tell workshop. <laughs> I mean, yeah, my... Uh, well, we'll see. We'll see. Um, I'm going to bring back a trophy, though. Bring back a trophy, and on Monday, I'm going to show the trophy, and that's what we're going to be looking at. We're going to spend an hour and 20 minutes looking at this trophy. Um, all right. Cheers, guys. Take care. See you.